An American writer and journalist specialized in travel and food and drink, Evan Rail has been living in the Czech capital since the year 2000. For the last half decade, he's called the city's Petrska Namiesti home. In this edition of My Prague, Evan shows me around his neighborhood, which despite being only five minutes walk from Namiesti Republiki, is still somewhat off the beaten path. We're in Petrska Štvrt, uh, Peter's Quarter, which is an area of Prague 1 that is in the center. It's very conveniently located, but it's still very residential. And it's not at all a very touristic area. There aren't really any tr attractions to see here. It's just a living, vibrant part of Prague where people actually live and work. What are the upsides and downsides of living in a place like this? Well, the upside to living in an area like Petrska Štvrt is that it's uh, very enclosed. It's a lot like an island in a way. Among districts in Prague, it's one of the few that has very clear delineated boundaries. On the north, it's the river. You can't go anywhere there. On the uh, south, it's Napožiči. To the west, it's Revolutchny. And on the other side, it's Cheshnov, Cheshnov which is the old uh, railway ground. One thing I noticed looking at the map before I came here today was how a lot of the streets leading off Petrska Namiesti, the square where we are right now, they have the names or names linked to trades. I think Sokonetska is from Drapers, that's well, not really a trade, but you know, it's a work, an area of work. There is Truhlarska, which is uh, joiners, there's uh, Bavirska, which is uh, dyers. That's right, there's uh, Zlatnitska just over there, which is an area that was linked to goldsmiths. And in fact, in this area, even today, you know, you'd think after so many years, so many things would have changed, but in fact, there are many goldsmiths in the area. And down this street over here, down Sokonetska, there are shops that do the business of just selling equipment for do, making jewelry and, and handling gold. Uh, it's got to be a very specialized trade. Have you any idea why this area is associated with the jewelry business? Not really. Uh, I do know that, it, you know, like many districts of, of old Prague, uh, it was a Jewish area once upon a time. There were also a number of brewers here. Uh, I like to write about beer and read about historical brewing and uh, it turns out that one of the great hop dealers of Prague in the 19th century used to live right down that street on Zlatnitska, just a few feet from where we are now. And my own building, which is built in the 1930s, late 30s, uh, at one point was actually a functioning brewery. Also, you were telling me earlier that there's some connection between this area and a famous Czech uh, kids book or book for boys. A series of books. That's right. It's connected to a, a bunch of comic books that were written in the uh, middle of the 20th century uh, called Rikla Shipi, about a gang of boys, uh, righteous, really, really good, good kids. Boy Scouts. Boy Scouts, basically, boy zone, <laughs> um, who go on adventures and have snowball fights and uh, get lost and rescue cats and things like that. And they live in a really particular neighborhood called Skinadla, um, Shadowville or something like that. And uh, Skinadla is, is known, you know, among all young Czech people as this, this place where the Rikla Shipi kids live. And some people have said that this neighborhood, Petrska Štvrt, was one of the models, one of the possible models uh, for Skinadla. One thing also that this area is known for is schools. There's three schools, I believe, within like, I don't know, 50 meters where we're sitting? Yeah, there are three schools and several preschools and... Uh, things for children to do as well. One of the things that, for me, that changes the way I look at the city is having kids. And you start noticing that there are a lot of resources for families in Prague that you simply do not care about when you don't have a family of your own. There are loads of really great parks. There are some really good schools. There are great after-school activities for children. And Prague is actually a wonderful place to raise a family. A lot of people look at it as the Las Vegas of Europe or a place to party or you know what happens in Prague stays in Prague, that kind of thing. But if you have a family, Prague can be a wonderfully livable, cultured city that is a great place to raise your children. A short distance from Petrska Namiesti, Evans' neighborhood meets Tieshnov, a small area distinguished, if that's the word, by a McDonald's under a motorway and the rather bland City of Prague Museum. We stop for a bit at the entrance to a tiny street where the two districts converge. Right now we're on one of the back streets of Petrska Štvrt. This is called Putova. Um, it's a tiny little lane, it's just an alley. And you can get an idea of how this might have been like Skinadla back in the 30s or 40s, that kids might have run around here, little street urchins might have had snowball fights or whatever. 
Around the corner, there's another little street that almost no one ever knows about, Helmova, which dog legs around the corner here towards Cheshnov. And it's just part of the area's character that you have all these little uh, mouse holes that go basically nowhere and that most people have never heard of. Right now we're just by Tieshnov, and I know that there was a train station here, but I don't know exactly where it was. Do you know? Yeah, it used to stand right over there. The main building the, that, uh, where the park is today was the, one of the wings that stood out this way. This was the main train station for Prague, for all of Prague. Uh, it was the original train station built in around 1850 or so. And it worked, it functioned until, off and on until the, I think through the 20th century, and it was finally closed down, or shut down for good, uh, the year I was born, in 1972. Is that in connection with the building of the Magistrala? Is that runs across here? That's exactly right. That's, that's how there is that space to put in the Magistrala, is that the train lines used to run that way. And the other thing that is, that's strange about it is you're still in Prague 1 and you have this gigantic open space that you wouldn't really expect, but it's only because it used to be a train station and a train yard. It's kind of nice in a way, it's kind of an eyesore because of the freeway just behind it, the Magistrale, but it's also nice that there's a big uh, opening, whereas the rest of the neighborhood is a bunch of tight little buildings and narrow lanes. But I guess that's also characteristic of Prague. You have a lot of areas where you will walk for some distance through narrow streets and then come out on a, an open space or a square. Yeah, I think uh, Frank Lloyd Wright might have enjoyed that. It's sort of the uh, birthing feeling of passing through a tight enclosure and then coming to some gigantic open wider world. There's a lot of that uh, around the neighborhood as well because we have a few squares that are big and then these tiny streets. And then on the other side where the river is, again, a gigantic amount of space. Do you know when this area was built or at least when these buildings around us here would have been built, I guess the 30s, 40s? Well, the area is a mix of buildings. There's a lot of functionalism from the 20s and 30s and 40s. My, where I live, it's also a functionalist building. But there are buildings from the 14th and 15th century that are still here. So there's a mix of things. There's a lot from the late 19th century. And then there are the mix of these things, these sort of futuristic buildings that you can see are from the 40s or 50s. That now in a bad state. Yeah, a little bit of a bad state. And there's some uh, wonderful buildings as well. With you know, in, in one sweep of the eye, you can see Gothic buildings, Baroque buildings, or neo-Baroque buildings, and modernist, minimalist, functionalist designs. They don't really clash. They all seem to go together to me. Cheers. Nazdravi. For the final part of our tour of Evan Rails Prague, we're having a beer on, of all places, the roof of Katva once the city's premier department store. And it's entirely fitting that we wrap things up with a pivot, as Evan is the author of such works as Why Beer Matters and the definitive Good Beer Guide Prague and the Czech Republic. A lot of people know the Kotva department store is a, a, a real eyesore. The, it's architecture, basic brutalist architecture from the 1960s, 70s, and a lot of people would think it's not very pretty. But at the top of the building. They've installed a new beer garden with a big deck and some views that I would say are among the best in the city. Well, the view here is fabulous. We can see the teen church and the whole way across the old town. That's right. And right next to us, you can see the super deluxe suite at uh, Hotel Pajij, where uh, you have a little room up in the tower that goes in the corner. It's all covered with glass and it's got 360 degree views. And its own gargoyles. And its own gargoyles, that's right. And it's uh, basically at arm's length. I think we could probably yell over there if, if someone were in the room. You can see all over the rooftops of Old Town and down on Jakubska as well, the little streets down here in Old Town. Would you come to somewhere like this for the beer or just for the view? I come here because my kids like it. There's a swing set and it... Um, distracts my kids for long enough for me to have a couple of beers. I come here for the beers as well. I, I drink beer fairly regularly, but I have specific tastes and I don't like to drink just anything. And this pub has uh, very good beer, usually. And I've got to ask you, Evan, what are your favorite pubs of all the hundreds of pubs in Prague? Yeah, it seems like there must be even thousands of pubs in Prague. I'm a big fan and a regular at Pivovarsky Club. Uh, it's close to me which makes it easy to walk there and walk home. That's by Florence Station. That's right, it's on uh, Krzyzikowa, number 17 on Krzyzikowa, very close to the Florence bus station, metro station. I like Zlichasi a lot, that's out in Nusle, which has expanded and gone from strength to strength. They, I think, started with uh, really bad beer, an industrial lager, and they expanded to having a few craft beers and then a few more, and then they got up to 20. And 
Now they have three different levels and they have something like 47 or 48 taps of great beer. Where would you recommend to people coming to Prague looking for the ultimate kind of old school beer experience? The places you mentioned like Zlichasi and Pivovarski Club I think are quite new. Uh, it's a bit of a trick question because the place that I would recommend for the old experience, the classic old school Prague pub, traditional cooking, Pilsner Urquell, the place I would recommend is Lokal. Now it looks like it's an ancient establishment from 20 or 30 or 100 years ago, but in point of fact it's only a few years old. There's one over here in Old Town, there's another one in Malastrana, and they've kind of expanded. I think they have four in Prague at this point. They serve wonderful, wonderful goulash and dumplings. And the beer is just simply the best version of Pilsner or Quell you're going to ever find. But I found those places really ersatz, like a kind of imitation of an old school Czech pub. It's an imitation in a way for the better. They cook their food from scratch. They don't use pre-mixes for anything. They don't use uh, pre-made sauces. Uh, they serve their beer in a way that is very forthright. They mark the date when they tap it on the, on the container itself. In terms of old school pubs, there were a lot of things that were charming, but there were some things like pre-made food and a sort of vague ambiguity about the freshness of the beer that um, we might be better off without. And awful toilets. And awful toilets. Yes, that's right.